Yo, what's up guys? Turn Green Go Ham here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Dark Souls Remastered OP Early Walkthrough. So first thing you'll notice at the top right corner, I have a lot of humanity. So I went and did some farming. Not to worry, uh, our souls are about where we left them last episode. Uh, but I knew I needed a lot of humanity. So I went down to the depths and I farmed uh, just a, a mess of rats. Uh, until I got uh, 40 soft humanity. Now, what I did with the uh, souls I had left over is I went and bought some Twinkling Titanite. And the reason for that is in this episode, we're going to run around. We're going to kill all of the uh, Black Knights now that we have the Gold Serpent Ring. Um, you'll notice somewhere in the Rusted Iron Ring, we're down in Blight Town for a reason. Um, but yeah, I, I spent it on uh, Twinkling Titanite and I bought some arrows. So uh, we're still at the same uh soul level ish i want to say give or take a thousand uh and we're gonna go ahead and level up so first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take strength 28. uh i'll be catching decks up on the next three levels but we want uh to be able to use that great sword we picked up uh and until we can get that decks up at least uh you know next time we're by a blacksmith we can go ahead and upgrade that uh and get that ready to to showcase and then um uh, we're down here for a reason. As I was down here murdering slugs, uh, I made it a, a purpose to skip the uh, Pyromancer set down here. But when we were all down here, uh, I then uh, forgot to grab it. So we're going to go grab that real quick. I did get a message the other day uh, asking about good Pyromancy gear. All right, gentlemen. Um, and well, for a Pyromancer, this is obvious. Uh, the Pyromancy set around here. We get Poison Mist, and we also get the entire uh, Tattered set. And we're going to head on back to the Bonfire and Rest so these mosquitoes don't have anybody to mess with. Uh, and then I want to take a look at some armor. We're probably going to change some stuff up. Uh, so the reason I got the 40 Soft Humanity is before too long, we're going to be taking down Sif and then uh, the Four Kings. Uh, I think I want to do that uh, before we head down to Catacombs, uh, because once you beat the Four Kings, we have uh, Kaith, uh, who is going to be our Serpent of Choice for this walkthrough. Um, he is the dark side, but he's the only one that a Covenant comes with. Now, once he pops up, we're going to want to join that Covenant, um, and uh, then we'll go ahead and max it out. Uh, it requires 30 humanity to max it out and get all the items from that covenant. Uh, and that's one of the ones you want to uh, work up if you are going for platinum. Uh, because you get the dark sword. Um, and also, it's got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, permanent red eye orb. Um, the dark set. Um, a few other things, but uh, we'll get around to that. Uh, anyway, real quick, let's, uh, let's do some changing of the uh, outfit here. Uh, we'll wear the Pyromancer set for a while. Why not? We just picked it up. And heavy boots. Yes. Okay, so um, while we're here, since we can kind of, um, you know, compare here, uh, in the same-ish weight class, uh, you've really got Crimson Robe. Uh, antiquated Dress is, is very light, but as you can see, it suffers quite a bit uh, in comparison on the stats. Um, dingy set. Eastern armor is good for a, a, a heavy mid set. Uh, if you're playing like me and you're you're running both quality and pyromancer, then um, honestly, eastern armor is fantastic. Uh, but if you're looking for more of a straight pyromancer, don't discount the uh, shadow garb. Shadow garb is actually pretty nice. Uh, you'll look all all twenties on uh, the de the physical defense. Uh, it doesn't have as much. Of the elemental type defense, the magic, the fire, the lightning, uh, but it does give you really decent physical defense for a set that I believe only costs six units uh, to put on. Uh, so don't discount that one when you're just needing physical defense. But for the uh, remainder of the time, when you're after uh, you know more magic type defense, uh, fire, lightning, stuff like that, um, then I'm. I'm, I'm always a, a fan of the Pyromancer set just in general because it has uh, really good poison resist. So when you're down here, um, you know, it's pretty easy to get around. Um, 
the sorcerer cloak is going to have uh, the highest bleed defense of your light gear. Um, the black sorcerer, excuse me. And then the uh, regular sorcerer is just going to have a lot of magic defense by itself. Um, so anyway, that's some uh, that's some good sets to look into if you're a pyromancer. We're going to just look like a pyromancer for a while. Uh, so anyway, we picked up the set. Uh, we got uh, what we needed down here, except... Uh, if you remember, when we finished with uh, Quellag, we did not rest at the bonfire for our um, covenant down here. So that covenant actually, that bonfire is uh, warpable. So we want to run down here and grab that real quick while we're here. Uh, and then from here, we're probably going to run around and uh, kill all the Black Knights real quick and work our way to Sith. I want to kill the Black Knights. I want to get a chance at all the Black Knight weapons. That's why I got the Twinkling Titan Knight. Um, because we are going to want to upgrade those. They are, uh, in general, decent quality weapons. Uh, now, uh, a couple of them will uh, definitely do better with strength. But it's so marginal that they really can be used with a, a quality build. Uh, the downside, of course, with Black Knight weapons is you, uh, you can't really do anything to them can't buff them all that stuff so um we now have the gold serpent ring we have you know at least 10 soft humanity uh now's really the time to go after the the black knights and there's three of them that we can get to really quick and we'll be getting those right after we go down here and uh hit this bonfire up uh, you want this bonfire for two reasons. Uh, it being warpable will help when we uh, carry on through that area there. Uh, and it will also um, give you quick access to your covenant here. As well as later on, uh, as we go into Isolith, we're, we're going to be heading this way. And it's a shortcut that you can only open um, once you are max rank with this lady right here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to plan on doing the Four Kings first uh, before we do anything else. Uh, that way we head on and we have all of the final bosses unlocked. So as we go through Catacombs, we can just continue on through um, the Tomb of Giants. Uh, I did also, uh, I should bring this up, uh, I did also farm the Basilisks. I was headed for 30 because 30 is max with the uh, Gravelord Covenant. Uh, but then I remembered that you don't actually receive any rewards past 10. The only thing that happens is your uh, miracles get stronger. So uh, I did stop early on that. Uh, glad I realized that before I you know, farmed the full 30. But anyway, now we've rest here. Um, we can use the warp. First thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to Undead Parish. And I'm going to upgrade our greatsword. Okay, guys, so I'm back at Andre. Uh, I did get the great sword leveled up to 14, of course. We're only going to take it to 14. Uh, as you can see, that is uh, quite a lot more weight. So we're actually going to be uh, down to mid rolls. Uh, unless, let's see, we're not using that. Uh, I do like the rolling action, but it does us no good if we're not uh, fast rolling. Let's see what this will do for us. Uh, it does indeed take us back into fast roll. Nope, yep. Yeah. Fast roll with Havel's Ring. So uh, we'll wear that for a while and monkey around with this great sword. Uh, I did do something else while I was here as well. Uh, we will be heading down to the catacombs sooner or later. Now, I got a large club off of one of the, um, you know, boulder chuckers down there in um, uh, Blight Town. Um, I'm going to use this as I go through, uh, but I just wanted to show you with the occult club. All you got to do is talk to Andre, go to modify, and go down here to uh, where you normally change it back. And uh, while it would downgrade all of these weapons, uh, what it does to the occult club is it takes it down to divine. Now, we picked up the occult club, so that's free. Cost you 200 souls, and you'll have a plus five divine weapon for down in the catacombs. Uh, divine helps the skeletons die before you kill the uh, necromancers. Uh, and it also uh, is blunt, uh, the clubs are. And that's why we're choosing those, because uh, skeletons don't like blunt. So uh, anyway, now that we got all that set, one of our Black Knights is actually right through here. Uh, he is guarding a shield. 
crystal lizard and a few other things that we'll pick up while we're here. Uh, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, if you're running around doing all this, why'd you go get the soft humanity? Well, I did it because I, it was, it was time to do farming. Uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, faith in myself. Well, as I take a hint from a shrubbery, uh, I have faith in myself that we're not going to die until we get past uh, four kings, which is what we need the humanity for. So, where, where is the? I missed it. I know I missed it. Nope, not yet. Okay, my bad. Keep going. Uh, the turnoff. There is a little backtrack turnoff, and that is where we are going. It's right here. Just hadn't gone far enough yet. Uh, so down here. Uh, we're going to have way over there, we've got an item, uh, slightly above it, like more in the center of the screen now, right over, uh, right to the right of my shoulder. That's a crystal lizard. We're going to pick that up on the way as well. Uh, and this one's tricky. You really need to be, uh, be ready to swing. It'll, it'll run kind of early. I like to, uh, save my stamina till I get right up to this little ridge right here. And now we'll start running. Oh, I missed it. That's okay. Quick save and reload. And there we go. Get a couple of Twinkling Titanite and a couple of large Titanite shards. Uh, and then we're going to head on down here. Um, the item is right down here. There's two paths. You take this particular path. Then you can drop down here. And there's your leather set, along with a long bow and some feather arrows. So if you would rather have the long bow over the short bow, uh, that's not the place for you. Uh, so you can see right here, um, that right there is the bottom tower where we fight. Uh, Havel, and over in that direction is the Dark Root Basin, uh, the portion with the Hydra. So that kind of ties all of these areas together. That's why you really do have so many options in this early game uh, of where you want to go. Uh, so down here, we're going to have a Black Knight. Uh, he's basically right around where our bonfire was. You guys remember when we... Uh, Walked around the corner of the bonfire. Yep, there we are. We want to bring him up here. He has a halberd, so he's got a lot of reach. I just want to get him out on some flat ground. Uh, and he's relatively easy for the circle backstab. If you want to go that route with him. Uh, that time, uh, he happened to do a last little uh, sidestep there. And there we go. One backstab, and would you look at that. Our first Black Knight weapon. Uh, so we got the halberd. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of speedrunners who will specifically come straight to this part of the game by passing everything else, which is uh, fairly simple the way this area is connected. But uh, they'll come straight here, take him out. Uh, and if they don't get the Black Knight halberd, they will restart the game. Because as everybody knows, if you get the Black Knight halberd to drop, you won the game. All right, right over here. Very important uh, shield, the Grass Crest shield. Um, now, this is a little different than uh, Dark Souls 3. In Dark Souls 3, it is 100% shield. In this one, it is only a 95% shield. However, you do still get the uh, stamina recovery speed, so that is nice if you're looking for a shield. Uh, it does indeed parry, uh, but it is one of the slower parry shields. I prefer to keep the heater, a parrying dagger, or buckler because I like the fast parry times. And I realize I'm running out of here when I have Homeward Bones. Uh, so anyway, guys, we're going to Homeward Bone and uh, actually, actually, no, no, we're not. Um, I just realized how close we actually are to another Black Knight. So we're actually going to head through here. We do still have an item up there on that ridge that we didn't pick up before. The Hydra's dead now, so we'll go ahead and grab it on the way. Nothing much, just a soul, but we'll pick it up all the same. Then we're going to head up here. 
uh, go through Havel's room. We'll go all the way to the uh, top of the tower, and uh, kind of outside, there's going to be a, a little uh, fire barrel throwing hollow, and um, that'll kind of lead us right into where uh, the next Black Knight is. This is the one that has the standard Black Knight sword. It is a tall tower. Come on in here where I can swing, bud. Matter of fact. Oh. Misjudged the distance. I have no poise. <laughs> They're out. Uh, at this point, we're just kind of monkeying around anyway. So we'll get this guy to come. That archer up there is eventually going to see us. We're just going to go down and take care of the Black Knight in the hallway, though. So no big deal. This guy to come on up here. As you can see, that great sword on a quality build doing some big, big, juicy damage. It's all about timing with the big ultra weapons. Uh, you don't even need to have a shield out as long as you have good timing. For this gentleman, though, and matter of fact, uh, I'm going to put on my preferred parry uh, item, the parrying dagger. Does kind of keep us from being able to block, but we should do just fine. And get murdered. Oh, look at that. Two for two. Black Knight Sword. All right. And now we'll go ahead and come down. This is the ring I told you in early game that wasn't very useful. It's the uh, blue tear stone ring. There we go. Uh, defense, uh, higher defense when you're under 30%. Uh, I guess it is useful for some. I just never really found it useful. Uh, so anyway, instead of running out of this place, I'll go ahead and uh, homeward bone out, and then I'll meet you guys uh, for the next Black Knight. Okay, guys, so we are here at the Sunlight Altar Bonfire. That is warpable, so no matter where your homeward bone took you to, you can get here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rid of this guy. And we're going to head on up here and try to go three for three on the Black Knight weapons. I doubt we'll get it, but um, I'm holding out hope. So uh, this guy, you can actually get a backstab on. That's why we're slow walking the last uh, part of the way here, because he can hear you coming up the stairs if you're running at a normal speed. Uh, but you can get a backstab. He's a little finicky, a little more finicky than other... Uh, enemies but it is doable if not he's going to turn around and hit you real quick so get ready to parry and this guy actually has the ultra great sword a oh, holy cow guys i can't believe we just went three for three on black knight weapons uh so anyway this that's labeled a great sword is actually the ultra great sword i'll show you real quick As you can see there uh, on the weapon top, Ultra Great Sword. Uh, it has BE, so it is uh, much uh, higher scaling on strength than dex. We'll probably still play around with it a little bit, uh, but just know this really is a, a strength big boy weapon. Uh, real quick, let's uh, show the Black Knot Sword. Uh, C and E, again, lower uh, scaling on dex. However, um, I feel that this one's a... a more of a, a fit for a quality build, even though uh, you would get more out of it if you were going straight strength to 50. Um, I, I will still play around with it. I'll probably play around with the uh, great sword as well, just to show you the moveset and um, you know what it's like. And then down here, I forgot we have the silver knight spear. That's a, a dex weapon for sure. Uh, and then, there it is. The Black Knot Halberd. So that is a DE. <laughs> There's not that much more scaling from strength than dex. Uh, so we'll probably play around with that as well. However, as you can see, a strength of 32. So the first one we can actually use uh, is going to be the regular Black Knot Sword because it's 20 and 18. Uh, and we'll play around with it soon. That is why I went ahead and spent these souls on the Twinkling. I can't believe still that we got all three of those. Uh, but anyway, 
we are off to fight a, a fight that makes me sad. Before we do, we're going to head over here to the balcony as we have an encounter real quick. Hmm. Uh, oh, hello there. Forgive me. I was just pondering about my poor fortune. I did not find my own son, not in Anor Londo, nor in Twilight Blight Town. Where else might my son be? Lost Isolith? Or the tomb of the Grave Lord? But I cannot give up. I became undead to pursue this. But when I peer at the sun up above, it occurs to me, what if I am seen as a laughing stock, as a blind fool without reason? Well, I suppose they wouldn't be far off. <laughs> so there we go. This is, uh, you, you notice he said something about Isolith. Uh, once we head into Isolith, we will uh, get in touch with him. Uh, that's all he has to say right now. He's going to tell us how he wants to be grossly incandescent. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and warp out of here. And from here, we're going to go to Undead Parish, where Andre is. Uh, and then I'll see you there. Okay, guys, so it's time to head off and fight what is the, in my opinion, the saddest fight in the game. Uh, we are about to fight Sif. Now, we don't know a whole lot. Like, we don't know if it's if Sif is a boy or a girl, but I highly suspect it's a girl. Uh, Miyazaki takes a lot of... Um, like, a lot of uh, um, influence from mythologies, different types of mythologies, um, stuff like that. And Sif is the female Norse uh, goddess. Uh, we don't know what she was a goddess of, but we do know that she was married to Thor. Uh, and so I tend to believe that Sif uh, is patterned after a female and is female, but who knows, really? They don't ever say. Um, all we know is that we're going to learn a lot more about Sif later on in the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. Um, I don't want to, you know, ruin anything, so we won't talk about it yet. Um, but the interesting thing about this game is that time is convoluted. Uh, so not only are we going to fight Sif now, but we're going to see Sif later and Sif will be younger at that time. So we, the thing about this game is that uh, there are a few things we know. And that's, you know, the emergence of fire, the uh, great war with the dragons, uh, the creation of the undead curse, the dark sign. Uh, it, as you look here, it's a fire uh, ring. And basically what that means is it's Gwen using the fire to try to contain humanity so it doesn't... Uh, you know, reach out and destroy the world, basically. He, he really believes that humans are the end of this world. Uh, don't forget, these guys are not friendly with us anymore. We're just going to run through, head on over to Sif's. Uh, but we know about that. Um, and then we know, you know, the events leading up to this, how the fire started to fade. Uh, Gwen threw himself on the fire to kindle the fire. All right, bro. Um... Uh, and we know that uh, it led us to this. The fire is dwindling and somebody else needs to either throw their bones on the fire and continue uh, to suppress the what is going to be the end of the world, basically. Uh, but really uh, just a transition into what they call the Dark Age, which uh, would be led by man and those from uh, Londor. Uh, but anyway, that's the timeline we know. Everything else is kind of up for grabs. You have NPCs coming over here and entering your timeline from their timeline. I thought I still heard footsteps. Um, and then, um, you know, summon signs that cross not just time, but dimensions as well. So, uh, But anyway, here we go. This is going to be the saddest fight you ever fight. Um, this is Sif, and she's a good doggo. No. As you can see, she's not coming out and attacking us right now. She's just protective of her master's tombstone. So once we approach, it'll start the fight. Uh, as far as this fight's concerned, 
we're hitting very hard with this uh, great sword. Uh, so we're going to be able to do big chunks of damage. But the, the big deal is you just want to stay under her legs. Uh, roll in, roll through sword attacks. Uh, and stay under the legs and take a shot here and there. And get your damage in where you can. Uh, well, this two hand, there's really no reason to have a shield up unless, I mean, I guess if you want to use the eagle shield, the great shield with the uh, highest stability, you could use that and uh, just kind of block the attacks. But we're going to go for just evasion. And I don't like to lock on. Whoops. That was horrible. You have to be careful about when you roll. Time it right. Get your hits in while you're underneath. She'll jump out. Get that roll time right. Get another hit in. Just about the right timing on the rolls. The rest of it's pretty easy. And I wasn't I didn't even see that coming. Under the legs, do some damage. And I really wanted to finish Sif off very quickly there. Let's hop off real quick. All right, settle down, Sif. Uh, I want to finish Sif off pretty quick here because I don't want to see her limp around. We're not going to show that to you guys. Anyway, for your troubles, you get the soul of Sif and the Covenant of Artorius Ring along with humanity and a homeward bone. Now, the Covenant of Artorius Ring is what we need to go take down the uh, four kings. If we look here, this Traverse Abyss. This ring symbolizes Knight Artorius's covenant with the Beasts of the Abyss. It's where, like Artorius himself, can traverse the Abyss. Uh, and that's what you'll find down in the Four Kings boss room. Uh, so this allows us to um, go ahead and take out the next boss, which in turn uh, pushes us uh, to getting our dark quest uh, started here. Uh, we want to go ahead and get that going so that we can... Uh, move on to other covenants uh, and not have to worry uh, about the Dark Covenant. Do I have... There we go. Homeward Bones. Go ahead and burn one of these. We'll grab whatever dex levels we can while we're at the bonfire. Wow, one. Okay. Is what it is. We need two more to uh, even up. We're almost to another one, so uh won't take long. Uh, so guys, sorry about the... Uh, the lapse in episodes uh the past uh week but i did have a lot of grinding to do and the job change so uh bear with me i'm going to get these out just as quick as i can uh, but there is uh you know quite a bit left and uh, i plan on sticking as close to i can as one episode a day so uh, guys if you're enjoying the series drop a like um, don't forget to subscribe and hit me up in that comment section down below in the next video we'll be going on and taking on the four kings and then we can go ahead and, uh, you know, head on towards, uh, through, I should say, catacombs to uh, Tomb of Giants. So, till the next video, guys, thanks for watching.